Let's make this minimalist typography focused sports poster in Photoshop. Our subject for today is Andrew Meshnick of the Madison Radicals. Let's get into it. So we're gonna start by dragging in our background texture. I've got this vintage wall that we're gonna go with and I'm just gonna blow this up so it matches the width of our canvas. By the way, this is a 1080 by 1350 pixel canvas, kind of my default Instagram dimensions. I'm gonna drop a mask on this texture and with my gradient tool, G is the shortcut, you can click while holding shift, dragging up to get like a perfectly straight gradient from the bottom. We're just gonna have this wall kind of transition into a floor at the bottom of the canvas. And you can drag out these points to your liking. And now to make the floor with a new layer, we're gonna take a rectangular marquee tool, M is a shortcut. I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle down towards the bottom. And then with the gradient tool, this black to transparent gradient, which you should have by default if your foreground color is black, you can and click and drag downward holding shift to make this slight shadow. So we kind of have the crease where the wall turns into the floor. And from here, if you want to mess with the opacity and make it more subtle or more obvious, you can do that. You can also move it up or down and arrange your floor as needed. Next, I'm going to drag in my player cutout. This is Andrew Meshnick, Madison Radicals. I'm going to make him relatively small and kind of out of the way. And once I've sized him about there, I'm also gonna decrease the opacity of this background a little bit. Probably doesn't need to be so harsh, maybe around 40%. Just something subtle is what we're going for. Back to our cutout, we're gonna start by making a foot shadow for him. So let's make a new layer underneath. Let's hold command and click on the thumbnail to select the cutout. And then with a fill tool, you can hold shift and cycle through G to get the paint bucket tool. We're gonna click once within these dotted lines. Deselect, Command D. Let's convert this for smart filters. We now have a black silhouette layer, which we're gonna drag down and distort to turn into a shadow. So Command T to transform, we're gonna drag it down. I think let's drag it all the way down past the feet. So like the light is coming from maybe the top right corner. And now holding Command, you can click and drag the shadow to bring it to the left. And maybe we want it a little bit closer to the body before we drag it out. So maybe something around there, we'll hit okay. And you can play with this some more if you want it to line up like perfectly with our cutout's foot. Going back to Command T, if you hold Command, you can click and drag these corners to make it a little bit closer to like right underneath the feet, but you still might have some white space there. So you can always make a new layer and just take a black brush and paint yourself near the feet in a way that makes it look somewhat continuous with the shadow. Probably need some for that foot as well. And I'm also gonna make a new layer and take a soft black brush and we're gonna flatten it out to kind of make this secondary shadow. We can lower the flow a little bit and using our bracket keys, bring up the size of the brush, but just clicking a couple times near the base of his foot and trying to get like more of a seamless blend into this gradual foot shadow. Let's take our long shadow and give it a Gaussian blur, go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and ever so slightly, maybe just 1.3 pixels, feels about right. Then we can take all of our shadows, group them together into a folder, we'll call this shadows. And if you want here, you can drop a mask on this and take your gradient tool again and just click and drag with a black to transparent gradient to kind of have this gradual shadow fade. I'm gonna group the shadows and the cutout into its own layer. We'll call this cutout and let's move him up a little bit. I'm just making room because I know we'll have some text at the bottom towards the end of the design. Let's drop on some adjustment layers to our player cutout and mess with the color. I'm gonna start with a gradient map. We're just gonna do this black to white gradient to kind of desaturate him, but also pop out the contrast a little bit. So if you clip this gradient map to our cutout, holding option and hovering in that space and clicking, you can have it so it's only affecting the cutout and you can lower it to about 40%, just dulling out the colors. And if you want to accentuate this lighting, you can take a curves layer and bring up the midpoint of this curve and then invert this mask, Command I. Now take a brush, we'll make it soft and we'll bring the flow back up to 100. Lightly paint on this edge because we're having the light hit him from the right side. And then you can also take this time to kind of bring out whatever subtle highlights are already on the cutout, bring the flow back down. You can start to like just fine tune the highlights of the jersey and of his face. Just bring some depth 
to the cutout and it can feel like you're not doing much when you go through this process, but it does make a difference when you look at like a before and after at the end. So you can see before and after, just that pop of light on the right side as well as some key highlights on the left. We can also bring a little bit of shadow to the left side of the body too. Again, another curves layer, we're gonna bring this point down and then inverting this mask with Command I. Let's just take a soft brush and click with a high flow a little bit on the left side. So we're just getting this difference and contrast of lights and darks to just sell this lighting effect. And it would help with the lighting effect if you mess with the background itself. Like right now it's just kind of a consistent white or light gray background. We can actually play with that and take like a, you could do it with a curves layer, you could do it with an exposure layer. Let's try curves and just darken this whole thing, you can even bring the, the highest point, the white point down, so something around there. And then again, inverting this mask. Now this curves layer is just above our background layer. So we're gonna go nice and big with a white brush on our black mask and just brush back in a little bit of darkness on the left side of our canvas. Now I gotta be honest, at this point in my original design, I felt like I could take it any direction. This was kind of the process I went through where I wanted like kind of a smaller out of the way cutout looking or reflecting on some big statement type background, almost like he's in an art gallery and just deciding what to put on this wall. And it took me a long time to figure out exactly what I wanted there. And I think I like what I finally settled on, which is this sort of graffiti type font, which I will show you now. Let's make a new layer and T for your type tool. I'm gonna type out his last name, Mesh. Nick. I'm gonna do it in two lines though. And then just blowing this up, we can bring these lines closer together by lowering the space between lines. And just want them like ever so slightly touching and overlapping. This font, by the way, is called a deco, a deco outline. And they've got all these different colors. Now next I'm gonna put a text warp on this text. If you go up to edit, transform, and warp. You can choose your type of warp, which I believe I did an arc upper in this original design. And you can play with this top point to make the effect bigger or smaller. And let's blow this up a little bit more and just kind of make this like nice big wall statement in the middle. I'm gonna shrink my cutout a little more just to bring even further emphasis to this background. So let's take our cutout folder and just drop it down. So now we have our main text. Let's start doing some text effects. I'm gonna duplicate this layer. So we keep the original. Let's bring it up to filter, convert for smart filters, and then filter blur gallery field blur. You've seen me do this in other videos, but this is basically a way you can like vary the amount of blur going throughout a text or any sort of image. You can just click points and basically mess with these dials, anything you want more or less blurred in a given image. Let's hit okay and stop there. Now because of this blur, I feel like it doesn't really sell the idea that this was like painted on or this is part of the wall because the blur is almost too gradual of a fade on the edges. So to make it a little bit harsher, I'm gonna drop a gradient map on top of this. Let's go to our adjustment layers, gradient map. And then if you bring these dials closer together, the dark and the light tones, you'll see you get like a more extreme contrast, which almost erases the blur, but just kind of changes the way it's affecting the text. So I'm actually gonna use this blue color, eyedroppering it from our cutout. That feels about right. And you know, you can just play with these colors and, and see what level of contrast you like. And maybe we like that, we can also go back in and see if we adjust these further, kind of the effect it has with the gradient map. You're getting like some of the background wall texture, these dots from the vintage wall, which I kind of like. And now because this gradient map is going over the top of everything, we have lost the detail that's just going on the white background as well as our floor. So let's bring those layers on top of everything, including the lighting and we can change this blend mode to multiply so it bleeds through the color of our text. And also when you have this type of blur with a gradient map going over it, it's an opportunity to introduce other colors. So you can like drop a point in between the blue and the white and like, let's see if we wanted to bring in a yellow, you can kind of do interesting experimental stuff this way. So even the light blue, which is what I did in the original design, I kind of liked what that was giving it and almost separating the the light and the dark blue, two different tones. Let's go with this. I kind of like the, the disappearing outline on the left edge. Now this next effect I discovered totally by accident. Bear with me, if you duplicate this text layer, let's just drag it down holding option. You can take this layer and drag it. Let's go to your effects and go to stroke. Just gonna add on this like, I don't know, light 
red stroke. It doesn't really matter what the color is, just as long as it's light, because the gradient map is gonna do what it does and just shift that color to whatever the lightest tone is on the gradient. So we're gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna decrease the fill to zero and going to command T, I'm gonna blow this up. So now we've got this like outlined version of the text going underneath our main text. And if you play with the stroke color, so it's something even a little lighter, you'll get it to a point where it just disappears from the background, but is affecting the texture of the actual text like this. We'll hit OK. And when you move this layer now, you get this like interesting distortion, I want to call it, on our text layer. It just kind of gives a, an extra level of grittiness to the whole thing. It makes the text look a little bit more interesting. The other thing we can do is give it a different texture. So like we have this black dot texture kind of going on the back of everything. White dots are gonna show up a lot better on dark text. So what you can do is take this vintage wall, I'm gonna duplicate it with Command J. Let's delete this layer mask. And now let's invert this texture with Command I. So now we have uh, a black wall texture. If you switch the blend mode to screen, you will now get white dots coming through and that is going to allow it to show up on this back text. Now actually we can take the texture and drop it below the gradient map to get a little bit more of these like finer detailed white specks. So like this is what it was before. If you drop it below, it kind of blends into the whole thing and makes it a little bit sharper of an image. Next we're going to type out some text at the top and bottom of our canvas. Let's make a new layer on top of everything. Hit T for your type tool and let's just type out player's full name. Andrew Meshnick. Font we're using is Termina, 12 point font. We're using a spaced out version. Let's hit space and then make a bullet point. Option eight is how you do that on a Mac. Just found that out. Madison Radicals. Let's do another bullet and number two. So we'll hit the check mark and select the whole screen with Command A and then Center Justify. With your move tool selected, you can get those icons. Bring up my grids with command apostrophe. I'm just gonna align this so it's like a two box margin from the bottom and about two boxes from the left and right. Let's actually center justify the text. That way we can adjust as needed. So we've got some text on the bottom. Let's duplicate this and bring some text up to the top. This one, we're just gonna do a quotation mark, mesh neck quotation mark as kind of a, a title of the poster. And we'll bring this one up to that same two box margin as well. Now for some finishing effects. First, I'm just gonna adjust the spacing a little bit. I think I wanna move the cutout down a little bit further. And honestly, could move the ground further down as well. Kind of that crease in the wall. We can take our vintage wall texture, delete the current mask, and just kind of redo this soft gradient fade. Going this way. And then I think our text, we can still make a little bit bigger. So let's take our blurred text and just drag it out a little bit more. So now for our finishing effects, I'm gonna drop a folder on top of everything, call it finishing. Let's start with a good layer of grain. You can hit Command A to select the whole screen, then right clicking with your quick selection tool, click fill, 50% gray, hit okay. Then filter, convert for smart filters, filter noise, add noise, we'll do 6%, sounds good to me. Hard light is the blend mode you want for this. And then shifting the opacity down to however grainy you want it. You can see like the, the finer details of the grain showing up in the background. We can make the lighting in this image a little bit more pronounced too. If we drop a gradient adjustment layer on top of everything, let's make it a black to white gradient. And I'm just gonna click this black value and make it the black one that's on the grayscale instead of the black that's on the blue and just changing the angle so we get this like lighter top right corner and darker bottom left. We'll hit okay. And then switching this blend mode to overlay is usually the move to like make that top corner bright and then fading to the darker one. Basically black on overlay is gonna darken things, white on overlay is gonna brighten them. You can reduce this maybe a little bit. I think we want the green going over the top of everything just so we don't lose that texture completely. Now, if we wanna play with the colors at all, I think selective color is a great choice for this particular design because you can mess with the whites. Let's go to the whites and just make it a little bit more blue shifted by upping the cyan. You can lower the yellows as well. Just kind of makes a cooler feel, which I think makes sense with this blue text that we have. You could make it darker too if you just bring the blacks up, but don't wanna do anything too extreme. It also crossed my mind that this white on the player cutouts jersey. Probably isn't a perfect white 
from the photo. So if we want to adjust that real quick, you can go back to your cutout layer and drop on a hue and saturation. And now it's usually in the blues for like the white parts and the black parts of a photo. If you want them like completely grayscale, I would adjust the blues and just desaturate that completely. Now, of course, this gets rid of the blues and the shorts, but we can add that back in with a mask, just taking a black brush and bringing back our blue in the shorts and maybe a little bit of this blue in the two on his back, but still desaturating the parts that are more white. And then something about the shadow still feels a little off to me. I think I just wanted it a little bit lighter. So let's just take the whole thing and bring down the opacity. So it's just a slightly cleaner look. Maybe I just need to shift it to maybe rotating it slightly. We're gonna stop there. That is our finished typography based sports poster design. Really when I came into this, I just wanted to make kind of like a statement piece where the cutout is more out of the way, but the focus is on what's behind the cutout and the cutout is really just complementing everything. I think I achieved that here. But again, when I was first going through this, this idea of a blank canvas where you set yourself up to really take a design in whatever direction you want. It is in the end fun to be in that creative zone. So hold on to that as long as you can and cherish those moments. Appreciate you watching as always and let me know if you have any questions.